Hey there, good afternoon everybody. Welcome here to Prog Monster. My name is Murph. I am the host of this show, a show dedicated to progressive rock and other forms of rock music. So we're here with the episode we do on Sunday nights called Commonalities Compared. This will come out at 8 o'clock. It's normal time. And uh, Ben, so what we do here is uh, Ben gives me two musical commonalities that have something in common with each other. Maybe they're two guitarists or two drummers or two bass players or two bands or, you know, two uh, artists that do album covers, whatever. And this this week he's given me two guys who are often compared and often thought about in the same vein. Yes, Steve Howe of uh, Yes fame and Steve Hackett of Genesis fame. I chose these two albums because this was their first albums with either band, either band, I guess is a word to say, either, not either. Um, so both guitarists, very different <clears throat> histories with me, but very similar in a lot of respects to each other. Um, for me, this was a big album. Uh, he was, Steve Howe was very dominant on it. His first album out, the band really utilized them to the maximum. Genesis, not so much. There seemed to be a bit of a conflict between him and the keyboard player, Tony Banks. And they kind of toned down or played out a lot of his stuff. And so he didn't he didn't get the kind of similar treatment that Steve Howe got. But either way, they're both fantastic guitar players. I've always thought of both of them. Well, before we get going on... Um, so for me, Steve Howe immediately became one of my favorite guitar players, ultimately became my favorite guitar player, has had a long and lengthy uh, career as one as my favorite guitar player, where Steve Hackett didn't have that impact on me, so I didn't pay any attention to him, even though there was bits and pieces, but I wasn't right into Genesis right away, and then by the time I did get into Genesis, in the uh, in, around the time when my daughter was born, I did have a couple of uh, Genesis albums, uh, "Trick of the Tail" and "Wind in the Weathering" that I liked both. But Steve Hackett, I thought was good, but I didn't think he was great. And the reason he wasn't great is because he was held back, and I didn't realize that. But he did do some stuff even on those albums that was good. So I knew he was a good guitar player. It wasn't until I started getting into Genesis um, in the years after my daughter's birth that I started uh, recognizing slowly that this guy was great. And then once I got on this channel and started listening to his own solo stuff and listening to other people talk about him and then going back and listening to stuff by him that I really came to appreciate the great talent that he is. So they both have, um, I would say they're similar in a couple of regards. Uh, they both have great acoustic abilities um, this isn't always something that you get with every guitar player, but these guys are among the best acoustic guitar players. But they also, I never thought of them really as great electric guitar players, but in, in retrospect, you know, it's, you know, the great guitar player is a great guitar player, and they both have lots of outstanding electric guitar bits that they've done. Steve uh, Hackett having done one most recently on his newest um his newest album is just like killer heavy with lots of ripping guitar on it. Uh, I did not see this coming. I knew he was a great guitar player. I just didn't think he had that particular repertoire as part of his, but he's actually killer on it. And he's done some heavy stuff uh, at different times. Steve Howell, kind of the same thing. He, he does, like, he started out with that Yours is No Disgrace. It's kind of a choppy song, and then... Uh, some absolutely killer kind of uh, almost jazz fusion-y type of stuff on uh, Sound Chaser. And then completely changed, uh, almost changed his whole sound with uh, drama where his music was such heaviness and scrapingness and and yeah, just some really good distortion on there too. It's just not something that I normally think of either of these guitar players as being. And they both have had extensive... Um, music careers as far as making albums too. I think they both have like 23 and 27 albums respectively. 
Steve Howe maybe a little bit less than Steve Hackett, but both have a lot, a multitude of albums, some of them instrumental, some of them classical, some of them heavier. Um, I think Steve Hackett has done a better job of, of commercializing himself a little bit more for mainstream, whereas Steve Howe just tends to stick with, with what he's best at. Um, they both have a multitude of abilities on different guitars. Um, uh, every once in a while, Steve Hackett thinks he can sing. I mean, sorry, Steve Howe thinks he can sing. I don't know that Steve Hackett has made that attempt and probably recognized that it wasn't going to be a good one. I wish Steve would learn the same thing. It's not that Steve's voice is bad. It's just, it's not that great either. Eh. Great guitar player, vocals he should leave alone, maybe. Anyways, some and with both band, with both these guys, they have a multitude of stuff to go to. It's not just um, the Yes and Genesis stuff. There's also their own stuff. They did do a stunt together called GTR. Probably wish they didn't. Um, wasn't very good. Not really that great. Uh, Steve Howe also pursued uh, uh, action with Asia, which was very different than and wasn't really well received by me I, I did like some of the stuff off the first album but after that it's kind of been downhill um he also did uh, one with abs h abwh sorry uh anderson bruford wakeman and how which to me is basically a yes album except for it's missing chris squire but other than that it's pretty much a yes album and uh steve hackett i'm not sure if he did anything other than gtr I'd have to go search up a little bit because I'm still a little bit newer to him. He's still something somewhat new to me, even though I've known about him and listened to him for 40 years. I just haven't got the volume of listening to as I have with Steve. Um, yeah, so I'm um, with Steve, with Steve Howe. <laughs> yeah, both great. Um, uh, there's a little bit of everything for everybody with these two guys. You, you, you and there, there comes a point where you just, you cannot deny how great both of them are. Some people wouldn't say that they're, to me, Steve Howe's the best guitar player that there's ever been. That's just my own personal taste and personal opinion. There's lots of people who think that I'm crazy for making that statement. That's fine. You're allowed to like who you like. That's what's, what it's all about. But there's a big argument for Steve Hackett being right up there in the top four or five as well. Um... Yeah, I don't really think that there's a lot of difference in ability as much as there is in maybe style. I find Steve Howe to be a little bit more jumpy in his music, like up-tempo, maybe not as up-tempo as um, some members, but tends to be a little bit more bobby and weavy and likes his acoustic stuff. And, and I think that comes from his liking of Chet Atkins. He probably gets that liveliness from there. I find uh, Steve Hackett a lot more melodic, um, but absolutely killer fingers, man. Absolutely dynamite stuff. But on the whole, there is uh, a lot more similarities between them than there is differences. Uh, both are great. I hope they both continue to be going on. They're both older now in their 70s but both have some great abilities. I, I hope that they continue to make stuff right up until the end, um, which, you know, who knows when that's going to be. But as it is right now, uh, Yes is still making albums. Steve Howe's at the helm there. And Steve Hackett is still making his solo stuff, and he's, of course, at the helm there. So absolutely killer. I would have loved for Genesis to get back all five of the surviving ones and do something, but I guess Phil Collins is just not physically up to it. So what would he do? He couldn't just be the singer if Peter Gabriel was doing that. So, And he can't do the drums anymore. So I'm not sure if that makes any sense for them anymore. It's unfortunate. This just didn't happen. I would have loved to have seen it at least just once. And I'm, I don't think I'm alone. I think a lot of people would. They're one of the few bands out there where... The five main people are all still to, all still alive and all capable. Anyways, I hope uh, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Commonalities Compared. Please hit the like, subscribe, and notification bells. 
And don't forget to put your comments about both guitar players in the comment section below. And we will be back next Sunday with another Commonalities Compared. So take care and have yourself a good day. Goodbye.